If you are a lover of history, relics, adventures, and more, then you must have been drawn to various stories behind the cosmopolitan city we now all call Lagos. One of those is the rich history behind a particular Asian town that make up the place called Lagos. For instance, it became the new home to the exiled King Kusoko, who was expelled from Lagos by the British Army, a town that has housed the first post office in Nigeria, a trade route for merchants of old, and more. To cut the chase, our focus this week is on Ekbe Town, once regarded as a sleepy town despite its rich heritage and contribution to Lagos' economy, how it is transforming into a fast-growing area of the state, new infrastructure, and reviving economy. It's a mix of history and modern architecture. Welcome to Community Reports. I'm Olu Phillips. From a consensus view, Lagos State, one of the 36 states of the Federation, is best described as the commercial nerve center. And many indices have been aggregated to confer on it that status. The coastal nature of Lagos has for centuries supported trade and investment, which keeps it commercially active. Within the state, however, and for administrative purposes, Five divisions have been mapped out as the composing area that make up Lagos. They are Ikorudu, Ikeja, Lagos Island, Badagri, and Ekbe. Of these five, Lagos Island and Ikeja are heavy in popularity and commercial activity. There's a big history behind most of these divisions. Ekbe, an ancient town, it's a community with monuments and exploits that stands it out in today's world. Ekpe lies on the north bank of the coastal Lagos Lagoon and has road connections to Ijebode and Ikorudu. It is said to be a traditional settlement of Ijebu people, a subgroup of the Yoruba. It was established by the mid-18th century as a chief port for slaves, pills, agricultural produce for Ijebode and the capital of Ijebu Kingdom. Ekpe, as a merchant town in the early days, meant that commercial activity was a constant with target developments. Through history, two major interruptions have been witnessed in a bid to speed up the progress of development to bring Ekpe into a comfortable steed like the other composing division of the state. I mean, Ekpe is changing. Uh, a lot of people say it's, it's the, the new London. Um, I mean, just yeah. looking for a nice name for it. Um, but you know, this speaks to the uh, campaign promise of, of the governor. Um, he happens to come from there. Uh, but not just because he's from there, but because he felt that Lagos is beyond uh, the Lagos Island and Lagos mainland, or Ikeja as the capital. Uh, and he wanted a situation whereby the three other key divisions, Epe, Badagri, and Ikuruju, are also well looked after, you know. And everywhere is developing in Lagos. Uh, but of course, because Epe leads to another state, you know, for a number of people who travel, like you, you know, you want to cut the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and you're going to uh, Ijebode and you're going to Ondo or you're going to Ekiti or you're going to Benin. The, the new roads in Ekpe leading to Noforija, you know, all the way to Eredo and then to Ijebode, um, makes a lot of sense that, you know, you, people are coming in from outside Lagos and they say, let me take Ekpe. And they get to Ekpe, the Noforija way, Eredo, and then trying to link the roundabout to come to Lagos. And, and they're pleasantly surprised about the um, massive road construction, the new roads, the, you know, uh, light up project, light up Lagos there, the expressway, you know, and people are shocked that, where is this? Is this a way? But it's just one of the things, you know, going on at the same time. Between 1979 and 1983, during the era of Alaji Latif Jakonde, he conceived the vision of constructing the Lekki Ekpe Expressway. That vision was aimed at rejuvenating economic and industrial activity along that axis. This made Ekpe become conveniently accessed through Victoria Island. And the second major eye-catching intervention is happening now. 
So, why a pair again? And is there a likelihood that all this intervention that would further open the space might interrupt the provincial nature of the area? There's no special attention there. Pe. What has happened to Epe is that for the first time in our history, redevelopment is coming towards the side, just as it's going to Badagri, just as you will find in Alimosho. In one day, 20, almost 21 or 27 rows were commissioned in Alimosho. Do you understand? So that is the same thing you find in Agege. It's the same thing you find in Ikeja. The reason people are not talking about this is because that is the story of that place. Every governor, every government that has come has focused on developing those areas. But Governor Kim Ambody has said that the entire 57 local government of Lagos State will be developed concurrently. So just whatever happens in Eredo is happening in Ikoseje, is happening in uh, Ojo local government and everywhere. And a good example of that is the 181 route that the governor commissioned uh, a few months ago. You have, for the first time in our history, there's a governor that is constructing at least two roads in each of the same local government at the same time. Our footpath joins the league of many who have thrilled the Asian history of Ekpe, precisely Eredo. Into the vegetation called Shungbo Eredo, the Shungbo Eredo represents a system of walls and ditches dug essentially as protective barriers and commissioned between 800 to 1000 AD with the Queen of Sheba said to be at the center of it all. It doesn't look like this thing is anything but history tells us according to what you're trying to say that yes. this hole was dug by um, people of the age, um, yes. ancient time yes. and they were giants Giant. and they dug this hole. Yes, yes. Why, why did they dig it? Were they hiding in there or what? No, they dig it for, the woman dig it because of uh, remembrance. Okay. Yes. And this height has been for many years. Yes, for many years. Some kilometers away in the trenches and slopes of the forest lies this ancient spring water, which for many years and centuries served and still serve as a source of clean water. And it's been here like this for years. Yes. It doesn't dry up. No. So this is the water that the ancient people also drink. Yes. Where is it coming from? Coming under the stone. Under the stone. Yes. The, uh, I mean the ancestors, they immigrate from Ijabudi to this area and see here. That is the Awan. Okay. We call it Awan. Awan is the founder of the Eredo. And we stay here for a long time. After, uh, I mean, uh, Sungbo. What we call it Sungbo? We call it Blikis. Some call it Blikis in, uh, in uh, Arabic language, the Queen of Sheba. According to what we had, uh, it has no issue. Okay. So uh, in the olden days, and it has, uh, it has money. By that time, it has money, and it has uh, these uh, slaves. By that time, they follow him, dig this, uh, this thing. Maybe a giant, because a place deep as far well as uh, 24 feet. I don't know. Why did they dig it? It's dog because of uh, to make name. At present, the archaeology, they are seen finding out what this woman used to dig this thing. Nobody has so far get the exact something that they have used to dig that said, rampart. How long is the rampart? Ah, apart from the we saw some part of the hole, but how long is it? It's around the Yebu Kingdom. From here? Yeah, I live in Jebu Kingdom, yes. That, Not that? Yes, here alone. It's around in Jebu Kingdom. Not here alone. We start from Oduguyon at uh, Ikorodu. Ikorodu to uh, Ukeri, to Ishara, Remo. <laughs> That's how long that, that rampart yeah. is? Yes. Not only here alone, but why this name? Uh, in, why? And the name here is that uh, it stayed here for long okay. at Eredo. That is why everybody knows Eredo, Eredo, Eredo. What of that spring? What's that spring called? Uh, that is Erifun. Erifun, yes. Uh, that is water that he used to drink. The Queen of Sheba and uh -huh. his But that time they were, they were here. We have uh, Erifun spring and then we have uh, the other one, Olota. 
at the that side. Spring water. And spring water too. But this one is the it claim more than the other one. This spring water. Yeah. <laughs> only God can see that one. Because that is why we met it. Nobody you met can, it. Even our forefathers met it there. You can't say you got and God is God uh, something. God put it there. Nobody can say you people it, still use it. We we are still using it. Oh. We are still using it. We bring some people like uh, these. Uh, uh, I mean uh, the church people. Uh, sometimes believe how they believe that when they take the water and pray for the water that uh, they yeah. saw they saw fire, and they would have to take the water even for me. But they used to come here and take the spring water for prayer. According to their own belief. <laughs>